All right, guys, it's a brand new year, and that means it's time for some brand new gear. And I promise I've got some stuff in this video that you've never seen before. So hang out for a minute and check this stuff out. What's up guys, Eric here with At Home in the Future, and I've got some really cool stuff to show you today. We're gonna look at EDC stuff and gadgets, we're gonna look at some travel upgrades, and by popular demand, we're gonna check out some great bags and carry-on options. As always, I looked at the best prices I can find for you guys online, and we're gonna put those down in the description below, but let's kick things off by checking out some EDC gear and gadgets. All right, gear and gadgets. So some of this is gonna be EDC or everyday carry stuff. Some of this is just generally useful and stuff I think that you'll really dig. It wouldn't be an at home in the future video if we didn't talk about some new pocket knives because that's one of the things I enjoy carrying the most uh, in my everyday carry setup. Of course, if you're just watching this for the traveling stuff, be sure not to take this stuff on a plane or anything. But here we go, some of my favorite new options I've been checking out in 2024 and we'll kick things off with the Kaiser Drop Bear. So this is one of those first knives that after Benchmade kind of lost their ownership of the axis lock and everybody started doing these crossbar locks, I feel like this is one of the first ones outside of Benchmade that made everybody take notice and for good reason. Lots of different variants of this one out there. So Kaiser is known for that silky smooth deploy a uh, really cool big fat belly blade. Got a little bit of a snub nose too, so if you're carrying a knife in a place where you don't want it to look all that threatening, I don't think this is a very threatening looking knife, but very comfortable. This one has micarta scales and stuff that feels super nice. Jimping all the way down the spine here, nice thumb studs, and of course, just silky smooth. I believe it's on bearings. And this one is also uh, 154 cm still, uh, which is really, really nice. Nice deep carry clip. Uh, but one thing cool about the drop bear is the crossbar lock in this, you can actually disassemble it and change the tension on that spring. So right now, I think it comes uh, standard with it right in the middle where it's fairly easy to actuate. If you want it to be a little bit more difficult to pull down on, uh, that's fine. If you want it to be a little bit more loose, you can kind of make it your own. But if you like that axis uh, lock style feel, that crossbar lock kind of system, um, you know, looking for a nice deploy. This thing is has been really, really nice. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than maybe some of the other, uh, especially some of the other knives we're gonna look at today, but um, really cool knife there from Kaiser. Well worth checking out. So that is the Kaiser Drop Bear. Uh, next up on the list from Gerber, which I feel like Gerber's kind of gotten a bad rap in the last few years. Um, I don't know if it was from their partnership with Bear Grylls, where just like a lot of their stuff just started to seem like kind of Walmart camping section type gear. But Gerber has this long history of making cool stuff. So this is the Fastball. And it's American made, uh, a really cool little knife. In a lot of ways, reminds me of the Benchmade 940. Uh, but very cool, kind of OD green scales on this one. Um, aluminum scales as well. You can see the badge in here, made in the USA in Portland, Oregon. But um, I've really enjoyed this. S30 v uh, still um, is a liner lock. Um, so I prefer the you know crossbar style locks and everything. But very, very smooth. I wish I had a deep carry clip. But as far as seeing Gerber return to their roots, uh, with this very light, very smooth knife. Cool Warncliffe shape to it too. Um, I've really enjoyed carrying this thing. Nice to see an American made knife. Uh, really slim, really light, low profile, very cool. So that may be up your alley. It's one I've been enjoying, just about the right size. And finally, uh, to check out in this video, um, this is a classic from Civivi. So their Elementum, which kind of took the world by storm as a nice budget um, option a few years ago. This is a button lock. Elementum 2, already very cool, nice blacked out blades there and everything. But the scales here are made in Ultim. And if you're familiar with Ultim, it's like an ultralight material they use in airplanes uh, just because it's rigidity um, and how durable it is, but also looks very cool. It has this kind of uh, translucent kind of look to it. Um, very neat. So you combine that with the already super popular shape of the Elementum 2. You got jumping on the back here and you combine that with a button lock. Um, pretty winning combination there. The only thing I wish, I wish I had some thumb studs. Um, Cause the flipper deploy in this is just slightly out of reach for me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, otherwise, man, just really dig everything about this. A very cool vibe to it. Of course, it's got the little lanyard hole there in the back. Nice deep carry clip and everything, but um, all these knives too that I've mentioned, none of these are overly expensive. So mostly $100 or less. I think the fastball is just a little bit more. So if you're looking for a new knife um, to kind of carry this year, I feel like these are all very cool options worth checking out. So uh, really, really neat ones there. Uh, next up, so wallets are something we talk about all the time in this channel. Uh, if you're into EDC or everyday carry, that's something that you probably have a lot of opinions on. Now, if you've seen any of my content recently, you know how much I love this uh, Apex wallet from Bellroy. It's very, very slim. It's got this nice um, open and close kind of magnetic clasp on it that I just find very fidgety and very fun and fits well in my pocket. 
and there's really been nothing else on the market the last few years that I've looked at that's made me stop and be like, hmm, that's something I'd like to carry um, until I saw these from Reform. So very cool company that makes these um, super, super durable, very minimalistic. They've got this special material with magnets put in. Um, these very thin wallets. So you take just what you need. They got just enough room in here if you want to tuck away some bills and an ID and put your most valuable cards on the outside. But this material gets a really interesting patina. It does pick up a little bit of pocket lint and stuff, but it is just about bomb proof. And like I mentioned, it has magnets in there. So you get that nice satisfying clamshell close. Um, a very cool concept worth looking at um, that I really dig. There's not much else like this out there, especially when you look at this model too. Same thing, it's just a tiny bit thicker. You have your spot on the outside where your quick access card and you can open it up and tuck away stuff to the side. But check this out, it also has this little pouch area where you can put all sorts of things in there. So whether you need to carry uh, like an Apple AirTag or a stick of gum or just some other stuff that maybe wouldn't necessarily slide in a typical wallet sleeve or coins, having that sort of capability built into something like this and a very satisfying uh, clasp system is super, super cool. Really dig these. I feel like this is probably the most unique wallet setup I've seen on the market right now, especially as far as something that's actually minimal. I feel like there's been this move to just carry like these leather sleeves that you can carry like two cards and maybe some bills in. But if you need to carry just a little bit more, I'd really check these out. I feel like they're super, super cool. Um, great people, good warranty and stuff too. So definitely check that stuff out. And along those lines, I mentioned the AirTag just a minute ago, and you may have seen the wallets that have like the little bump in it where people put the AirTags. The AirTag is small, but it's thick, it's like a little chunk. And I don't think that looks all that great in wallets. If you're looking for something with similar functionality, Rolling Square has this new tracking card that I think is totally awesome. Um, it also works with Apple's Find My system um, and is very, very slim and thin. Check this thing out, very cool. And also just has like this retro futuristic, I don't know, it's just got really cool lines and stuff in it where you can see the interior circuitry. But it also has a few magic tricks up its sleeve here and you see I'm covering some stuff up. Inside this card is built in, it's got a QR code and an RFID tag on this side where you can scan it and share your business card with people. So I'm covering mine up so you don't um, get my phone number, start calling me all the time, but a uh, very cool system. Again, you can see the chips and stuff there, but this pairs with Apple's Find My Network. So just like an AirTag, it doesn't have the ultra wideband tracking, but anytime anybody's buy it with an Apple device, it'll pick it up. The battery lasts about two years. Um, it also has a chime inside of it when you're trying to locate stuff that's actually louder than the AirTags. So long story short, if you're looking for something to put in your wallet, I typically don't lose my wallet all that much, but if you're the kind of person that does, being able to slide this down on a sleeve like this, or even inside this little pocket we just looked at, um, these are an awesome solution, very inexpensive, very cool product uh, from Rolling Square, which we have a few more Rolling Square things in a minute, so hang tight. Really, really dig that thing. So these other two items we're gonna look at here are less of EDC and more like every week use type things. Uh, the first I want to show you is this beautiful toolkit from Hodo, uh, which is a brand that's kind of new to me, but I'm really digging like their minimalist, highly thought out um, tool design. It's kind of like if Apple designed just basic tools, I feel like that's what you would get from Hodo stuff. Um, so we've got this little case here and open it up and we have this little magnetic uh, board here where you can put your screws and all that stuff. It's gonna make more sense here in a minute, uh, but it comes with this right away. But what we have is this awesome, little electric screwdriver system that's made for just taking stuff apart. Now it's not made for like major house renovation stuff. So the bits and stuff you're gonna see in here are designed more for electronics and small gadgets and tinkering with stuff. But what you have is this little screwdriver, super minimalist design, two little modes, reverse and forward. It's, check this out. It's got very, very quiet, I mean whisper quiet, but got a little halo ring light built into it. And all these bits down here, you have just about every shape you can think of, which is very cool. And if you notice, you may want to pause the video and look, but all these different shapes on here, a lot of these are the size of screws um, that knives take, that small electronics take. Uh, if you're taking apart stuff that really you're not supposed to be taking apart, maybe like a child's toy or a video game system, you have all that stuff. You have all sorts of little uh, tweezers and pry bars and suction cups and all these things and everywhere you need to actually um, stow the stuff as you take it apart. Like I mentioned, this tray is magnetic, so things stick to that. You can magnetize and demagnetize these bits by putting them in here. Um, and the coolest thing is this little screwdriver, you just pop it right back in its case here and the whole system here, when we put it back together, we'll pop it right here and close it up. Nice and contained to this little clamshell. 
and it charges with USB-C. It's just the most well thought out little toolkit that immediately earned a spot right on my desk. Anytime I'm tinkering with stuff in the house, changing batteries, um, trying to fix something, get some gunk out of stuff, um, it has absolutely been an awesome little thing to have. So really beautiful little kit from Hodo. Make sure you check them out. Last but not least in this group of just gadgets we're checking out here, you're probably wondering what in the world this is because um, it's unlike anything else I've ever reviewed on this channel. But believe it or not, these are pull-up bars. <laughs> so uh, if you're in the new year thinking and trying to get into shape, maybe you've joined a local gym, maybe you're looking at equipment for home, um, you've probably looked at all sorts of different solutions for doing body weight exercises and everything. That's my main way of staying in shape is body weight stuff. So push-ups, pull-ups, just general calisthenics type stuff. And these are the best like over the door bars I've come across. So just to explain how this works, as you can see, they pack really flat. They actually have this elastic band that can wrap around them and keep them um, all cinched up for travel and everything too, which is actually what they're designed for um, is to take along with you. So if you travel quite a bit, you can even carry these on. I think this whole thing here weighs probably about three pounds or so. Uh, but when you take them apart, you're probably wondering how are these pull-up bars? These just slide open and there you go. You just put this part over your door here. And then once you clip the other side in and stuff, it seems like it's really flimsy here, just holding it, but your body weight and just the tension from this, this is a spring loaded where it goes up or mounts around your door, but all that holds it into place uh, for probably one of the most sturdy feeling uh, pull-up systems on any door that I've uh, felt. So you can put them really close together and do chin-ups. You can put them kind of further apart, kind of overhand grip pull-ups for your shoulders and stuff as well. You can do hammer grip there from the bottom where you can grab them and you can put them on the ground and they'll kind of go flat and you can move this stuff flat as well. And you have push-up bars, kind of elevated push-up bars as well. So as far as a system that can help you uh, stay in shape, take up very little room, easy to take on and off your doors. And more importantly, this will not damage anything at all. Those, <laughs> the same pull-up bar you see all over the place at Walmart and every store you go to, that tends to eventually mess up your trim. These, they swear, will not do that. In my experience, I've been using these for a few months. They don't do it at all. Uh, super awesome. So those are the J-Flex uh, CrossFit bars, uh, probably the best uh, pull-up and push-up system around. As far as like a portable gym, this is the best thing out there. So speaking of portability, let's switch gears here for just a second and talk about some travel specific gadgets because I have some stuff I'm really excited about actually and some unique things that uh, was totally new to me. So I think it may, may be new to you as well. So uh, first up, let's talk about uh, passport wallets. Now this is something that, you know, I don't feel like it's probably not new at all out there, but Alpaca's take on it, I think is. So most of the passport wallets I've seen out there um, felt just a little bit clunky or unnecessary. They add like these giant billfold things to your passport and everything. When a lot of times your passport is a smaller thing that you don't really want taking up all of this space. And that's really why I like what Alpaca has done with this one. So you've got this uh, very slim, very light wallet system uh, made from this X-Pack material, super durable stuff. You got slots on the outside where you can slide in cards or your global entry badge or any of that stuff. But your passport itself, I feel like a lot of the other solutions out there requires you to open it and dig it out. Um, when you ever go through security, they hate that. When you wait till you get right there and you have to fish something out. The reason why I really like this alpaca one, you got this tab right there and there's your passport. So very simple to get into and very easy to press back in. And more importantly, this is an RFID wallet. So you may have seen all the conspiracy theory style videos out there about like smashing your RFID, you're doing crazy stuff so you're not tracked with your passport. Most of that's probably crazy, but uh, just having that sort of peace of mind in this, I think is really great, but very slim, very minimal weight. So if you need something to protect your passport, keep track of it and keep track of all your other travel documents. I feel like that's a really good solution there from Alpaca. Uh, so next up, I want to show you a few different things from 12 South, which is a really cool company. If you have Apple gadgets at all, you've probably seen some 12 South accessories out there over the years. Um, but these two things are travel specific and some of the coolest things I feel like I've ever seen. So first up is the Airfly, uh, which is this tiny little super lightweight dongle. Uh, charges via USB-C and its primary job, the primary marketing push with this, especially with travelers, is you're on an airplane, they've got the seat back system in front of you where you can purchase or plug in um, headphones and stuff and listen to stuff. Well, most people these days are listening to AirPods or wireless headphones and sometimes really, really nice ones. And so it really sucks to have this movie in front of you or a show or TV that you want to watch and then not be able to use your good headphones. Have to purchase cheapo headphones or some old ones that are still wired. Um, and that's the problem that this thing solves is this little dongle just plugs in, has a 25 hour battery life, and it can support up to two pairs of wireless headphones, even AirPods and stuff. So you plug this in, you push the button, your AirPods are already paired to this thing, and then you immediately connect as if you're wired in with headphones. So super awesome. 
Now, I knew about this for a while and I knew about that feature and everything, and I thought that was cool. But what I didn't know is this model, because this is the Airfly Pro, can actually receive and transmit. Uh, what makes that cool is not only can you plug it in on the airplane and do that sort of stuff and use your wireless headphones with that, if you have another device, like this little game system I have that I built for all my retro games, it doesn't have Bluetooth support for my AirPods, but I can plug this right in at the bottom and immediately use those with that. Works super well. Same thing with like a Nintendo Switch. Uh, but what makes this extra cool is if you're a place where you want to send music to something. So maybe your, your rental car or your friend's car or even your car, uh, you can plug this little thing in, change the transmit mode, and you can send your music from your phone to the car. Um, just lots of little extra superpowers. And this thing only weighs like an ounce or two. So throwing it in your bag, um, it's awesome. And again, USB-C rechargeable, so super cool. I really, really love that. The other product I'm checking out has immediately become my favorite travel charger. So if you've watched my previous travel videos the last few months, um, you've seen me recommend this thing, which is kind of an Amazon special that I found. There's a more expensive version of this style setup out here where it unfolds. It's got a spot for your watch, your AirPods, your phone. Um, it's a little bit flaky. This one feels a little bit cheap. Doesn't charge all that fast. Um, I don't know, it's been fine. But this one from 12 South, I feel like is exactly what I was looking for when I picked this up. It's very small, very slim, weighs a little bit less. The build quality is night and day difference. Um, check this out though. Opens right up and you have a spot for your MagSafe phone or Qi 2, it'll charge on here. You have a spot for your Apple Watch built right in so you can plug that in, plug one charger in, get both of those devices. And if you have AirPods Pro, those can also charge in this pad as well. So you have a smaller system um, with faster charging, made of better materials and everything, very, very light. Um, closes up in a cinch and super easy to throw in your bag and everything. But you can also fold it the other direction here and put your phone against it and have your um, iPhone on the nightstand mode thing where you see all the clock stuff and everything or alternatively do that with your watch as well. A very, very cool little setup there. It comes with lots and lots of accessories too. So you got, of course, your power brick. Uh, you notice there's a little line here by the plug because it comes with just about every plug adapter you would need for international travel and everything. It's just a little USB-C recharger. Uh, it's a very cool, a lot of bang for your buck. Very cool product there from 12 South. Uh, the Butterfly charging system, absolutely my favorite new travel charger. Uh, but I have a few more hacks related to charging. So I just mentioned this little brick up here. And if you watch my previous video, I've got my travel bag, which of course you've probably seen a lot of at this point. And you may have remembered uh, my charging system in there where I have this, um, this adapter here for my phone. I have this fairly heavy anchor charging thing here for my laptop. It's got a few other little ports and stuff. I have an additional adapter in the bag for like my nightstand setup and everything. And I realized there's a lot of redundancy in that where I have, even though it's not a ton of extra weight, there is extra weight. That made me look for some other solutions. Um, so I got some things to go through here that I'm really excited about that you can just absolutely minimize the amount of weight and clutter in your bag and bring just what you need but still be just as capable. Uh, so the first thing to talk through from Aohi, I believe that's how you pronounce the company name, we have a charging brick here, still very very small, it's 67 watts which is a lot of energy here and you still have a USB-C and a USB port in there and it's got this cool little charging light here at the top where you can tell when you plug something in if it's actually fast charging or just regular charging or trickle charging. Um, even the cable that they include with this, if you want to use that, also includes a little screen display on there where you can see the wattage that something is charging at, which can be reassuring if you only have like 30 minutes somewhere in the hotel to charge your phone before you got to go out. Um, lots of peace of mind for that. So what I'm doing with this is swapping out the single purpose charger that would come with this. And I'm probably gonna be using that with that and anything else I need to plug in that's like on my nightstand. Um, so let's talk about charging my laptop. So I mentioned I had the big anchor thing that I kept in the sleeve for my laptop. I'm gonna use this one down there for my nightstand stuff. But what about my quick access charger for charging big things like a laptop? Well, that's where this comes in. So this is also from AOE. And this is probably one of the most interesting products I've seen out there in the charging space right now. This is a 65 watt USB-C charger. Uh, it's got the charging light on there that again shows the fast charging states and everything else, works with any USB-C cable, but it is very, very light and very, very thin. So instead of choosing to put this giant brick in its outside pocket, and again, this brick is even small for what it is, but look at the size difference in these things. And this thing probably weighs about three ounces versus about seven ounces for this. So half the size, half the weight, but all the power I need to charge stuff. And look at this. This is how it plugs in. It's got a little plug up here at the top that actually rotates in the wall. So you have a lot of flexibility with how you plug stuff in. Just a totally different approach um, to taking a giant power brick to charge your laptop and stuff like that. 
um, gives you a lot more flexibility with how you're um, stuffing stuff in your bag and making things easy to access. So very cool products there from Aohi. Uh, so finally, let's talk about cables here for a second. So again, going through my whole travel backpack setup, I probably have like five or six separate charging cables in there which is fine, that doesn't seem like a whole lot, but man, when you start adding up the weight and just the clutter from that over time, it takes up a lot of space. So if you remember, in my outside pocket before, I kept one of these in-charge keys that are really, really interesting. So this is their smallest version, which is the original one that I came across. Um, small little cable right there, USB-A uh, to USB, or to, to lightning if you want, but can also be USB-C in the bottom. This lightning port also has a space for a micro USB adapter and also USB-C. So there's all these different combinations of charging that you can use. So having this little key over the years has been great. And I use it all the time for power banks and stuff. Um, but I decided like, man, I wish I had something like that, but just a little bit longer, not knowing that it existed. And guess what? It exists. Rolling Square makes all sorts of different versions of this cable. So instead of keeping what was before like six cables in my bag now, I'm actually just going to keep these two. And I'll go through these others here in a second. But this is the exact same setup as this little small key that I thought was super cool for years, just a little bit longer. So this one gives just a little bit more flexibility. I'm going to keep this on the outside of my bag for use, unlike the tray table on the plane. Um, just, just long enough, just what I need. It has all the same flexibility I need for USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to Lightning, yada, yada, yada. Same thing, that kind of carries across all these cables here. But we have this one foot version. We have a six foot version, which is just about the Goldilocks size in my mind. It even has this nice cable cinch and everything. And these are really nice thick cables that don't get tangled up. So you have a lot of room to plug in from a wall socket. Um, all the way to your nightstand, or if you want just a little bit more, um, there's also a 10 foot version that's really, I think only an ounce more than the six foot one. It gives you all the flexibility you need to run a laptop cable all across the room. So you're in a coffee shop, um, you can take one cable out to plug in literally just about anything that you have um, and be good to go. And the cool thing about all these cables, super well engineered, you have all those different combinations of ways you can charge stuff. But each of these is also rated to charge to at least 100 watts. So a really high quality cable. So if you're looking for key upgrades to your travel setup, definitely check all this stuff out. I think you can't go wrong with any of these things. So we're about to talk about some of my favorite bags and luggage to take on some adventures. But before we do that, I want to talk about like three staples right now that I'm enjoying for all of my adventures, whether that's close to home or traveling. Uh, the first of these is this shirt jacket from Railwind. Now, Railwind is no stranger to the channel. I've had a few of their other jackets and clothes stuff on the channel before. But this may be one of my favorite things they make. Now, it kind of takes that wind zip design that's so popular. If you go on Huckberry, that's one of their top selling Railwind jackets. People love that thing. It takes that same fabric and the same interior that's like this kind of quilted soft sleeping bag material and puts it in the shirt jacket that matches just about everything. It's surprisingly warm, also very light. Uh, rain kind of goes off of it. It fits really well, I think, uh, but it's really great for layering and everything. And so whether you're going on an adventure or you're going on a trip or just kind of going around town, it's one of those jackets you can put on that I feel like matches pretty much everything that you would wear, which makes it great for traveling too, because you're only taking one thing. So really dig this thing. And I love layering it, especially with hoodies like this. Let me take this off for a second. So this is a simple raining champ terry hoodie and these have become by far my favorite just wear it all over the place kind of hoodie uh, they're made for more of like an athletic cut and i think really made for working out and that sort of thing but because of that they have kind of a slimmer build and a slimmer look that kind of i don't know i think looks pretty good on it doesn't look like your normal hoodie where you put something on and you just have all these baggy clothes like it fits really well it's super comfortable it cleans up easy comes out the laundry uh, looking great and everything but uh, really really good products uh, the hood fits well and everything as well um, and also made by hand I think in Canada uh, it is a really top quality product so if you're looking for a hoodie definitely check these out just come in a few colors but it's colors that go with everything so really can't recommend these more and finally as far as footwear goes I've been trying to get outside as much as possible on the warm days to beat all the gross winter weather and these shoes from Hoka these are the Kaha 2s uh, kind of a trail shoe, trail boot type thing, uh, except they're more of a sneaker fit. And these things are absolutely awesome. Uh, probably the most comfortable like trail hiking style shoe that I've ever worn. So uh, you may know Hoka from the running stuff. They've got kind of the big soles and the big back here that gives you a lot of stability and balance and everything. But this is one of their hikers. Also comes in like a boot format, but I really like these just because the flexibility of them. Got an awesome Vibram sole. You got Gore-Tex stuff built in so it's waterproof. You step in a stream or something and it goes up to there. You're totally fine, but very, very light. Unbelievably comfortable and cushy. 
I wear hiking boots and stuff all the time. I've worn them for years. I feel like I always get hot spots and I really haven't had that with these. So to me, it's like almost a sneaker first, but with all the awesome hiking shoe features built into it, can't recommend it strongly enough. Come in a few different colors. Um, if you're going on some adventures, again, these are light, so they pack easy too. These are what you want. All right, bag and luggage recommendations. What is probably the most asked question on the channel right now. A lot of you guys have watched my big travel EDC video where I carry this pack and have asked about other bags, have asked about carry-on luggage and all that stuff. Uh, so I got some really cool things for us to check out today. So first and foremost, uh, if you haven't watched that video yet, uh, go check that out. I'll link to that uh, up above. But this is kind of my tried and true travel bag right now if I'm just going one bag travel. So this is a Topo Designs bag. Uh, really cool, kind of different looking for a backpack, but it has some great storage capabilities. And I just really like the, the look and the feel of this thing. But if you're looking for a backpack that has, I guess, more specific travel compartments, or that maybe blends in just a little bit more, because this one comes in a bunch of different colors that are kind of funky and stuff, have a good recommendation for you from our friends at Alpaca. So this is one of their travel backpacks that has really quite a lot of thought out features and some really cool upgrades that I haven't seen before. It's made of this really cool um, kind of X-Pack fabric, although we'll look at something else with the X-Pack fabric here in a second. Second. This has more of a cloth feel on the outside, which is interesting, but really durable stuff. You know, it kind of looks like a traditional backpack. You got nice straps in the back, some really good padding. You got carry handles and everything and kind of all the straps and compartments and stuff that you expect. But what makes this thing special in my mind is the way it's kind of thoughtfully designed for the traveler that may need to kind of sling it around their body or kind of maneuver it in a way to get at stuff at certain periods of time. Um, so yeah, you got your big giant clamshell compartment uh, that's pretty standard in all these bags. We'll check that out here more in a second. Uh, but you have quick access to a lot of areas on the outside. So of course you've got a bottle compartment here that can stow some cool stuff. It's got a little space for your keys and everything. It's got your typical luggage pass through. And like I mentioned earlier, the carry handle and straps and stuff. Well, one thing that I really like is on the outside, you have where you normally see another bottle pocket, you have this open flap right here where you can put it across your body in the front um, and get to pens and papers and just little, I don't know, gum, things you need to quick access for that you don't want to dig way down in a pocket for. I think that's really cool. And also on the front here, you've got this little flap that bends down. Again, similar storage, um, identification, notebooks, uh, all sorts of different stuff like that, pen and paper. Lots of different places to cinch stuff down, little pockets to organize things, really cool. Um, another quick pocket like that up here at the front for one of those two. Um, the main compartment, like I mentioned, is clamshell on the inside. By the way, this has really nice zippers, which is good to see. Kind of hard to see right here, but lots of room for your packing cubes for uh, kind of a similar organization setup. Maybe the fabric's not quite as thick as that Topo Designs one, but a really nice thought out area. It has pockets on the side too. Uh, by the way, Alpaca has really interesting packing cubes that you want to take a look at. They have some really neat antimicrobial features and kind of expand like some of my favorite packing cubes. So if you're looking at this, you may want to look at that as well. Uh, but I like all these spots it has to cinch stuff down. And of course, they have a nice, laptop compartment here in the back that also has a place to store paperwork or tablets or anything else like that. So very thoughtfully designed for somebody who travels, uh, maybe maybe overkill as far as pockets and organization go if you're just using this like a work bag or a daily commute bag where you just need to hold put stuff in. Uh, but well worth checking out. So that's an option there if you're looking for another backpack. But what if you're looking at something like a duffel bag? Have an interesting solution there. So if you've watched the channel for a while, you know how much I love Peak Designs gear. I love their stuff. They're really well thought out, the way they approach things. Their packing cubes are really, really great. Uh, but man, I really, really dig this duffel bag that they make. So this is a new pickup for me here recently. Everybody's got kind of like a ratty duffel bag that they'll throw stuff into that's, you know, broken and things are hanging off of it and everything. And most just normally have a big compartment, maybe a zipper pocket on the side. But in classic Peak Design fashion, this thing Thing is pretty much over engineered to the max. Even the handles up top, these like attach magnetically and everything. Both sides have these big deep pockets here where you can put an ID and have all these places where you can slot stuff in and stay organized. There's tons of lash points all over the bag so you can take um, your big handle here, you can carry it like a normal duffel, you can move your handles around here to carry it like a backpack. There's just all sorts of different ways you can do this. Really easy to attach that stuff. This particular variant of it is made of that nice X-Pack fabric that is just about bulletproof, uh, stain resistant resistant, water resistant. So you can just throw this thing wherever, throw it up in a overhead bin and not worry about it getting totally gross. Um, as I mentioned, there's another pocket on the other side that's kind of pretty much identical to the other one. We've got this giant open compartment on the inside. I was using this to tote some <laughs> review gear around, but you can see how easy it is to get at your stuff. And again, there's pockets on both sides, tons and tons of organization and everything. And when you sit this stuff down, if you don't have it fully extended too, there's even magnets built in uh, to keep all the flaps and stuff kind of at bay and looking nice. But again, as is typical for Peak Design, just over-engineered, totally awesome, bulletproof, will last you absolutely forever. And if you are a duffel bag style traveler, this is the one you need to be looking at. It's super, super cool. 
All right, so here we go. The big question, if you're looking for a carry-on bag or just luggage in general, what would I recommend? Uh, definitely got some cool options that I think you're gonna enjoy. Our first one is a really interesting line from the folks at Level 8. I think this is their Voyager series. Um, and so I have the carry-on of this and like one of their bigger bags as well. And it has a few really cool features um, for kind of like, what, not like super cheap or anything, but one of the lower tiers as far as the budget category with luggage. Luggage can be really expensive, guys. Uh, anyway, this is a really cool bag and I'll show you why. So it's got super nice, um, high quality polycarbonate shell. It has a nice texture too. So it as it gets beat up and thrown around a little bit, you probably won't see it as much. Uh, really nice spinny wheels that I feel like work really great. Opens up as a clamshell, really cool. You got TSA locks on top and everything. But kind of the claim to fame, I think, for this bag, uh, it's the right size, it's the right weight. Um, nothing super special in either of those categories, but check out how they approach the sliding handle. Very cool. See how wide this thing is? So it has four levels of stop and everything, so not a huge range of motion. Uh, but as far as leaving you room inside the bag to pack, which is a huge deal, um, this does something that I really haven't seen much else out there do. Now, it has, also has a pitfall too, if you have one of those backpacks that you like to slide over that stuff. Uh, most of the luggage pass-throughs on those won't accommodate something this wide. Uh, but a pretty interesting feature. Now, as far as the inside and everything, um, nice, kind of no frills, typical zipper storage. Sometimes the zippers aren't like super, super top notch or anything, but for the price point of this thing, um, I really dig it. Like I mentioned, the larger version of that, the big light luggage piece, it doesn't quite fold as straight in half when you open it, uh, but it features a lot of the same things, kind of the handles to the edges, gives you a lot of bang for your buck as far as packing room goes. Um, so that is option one that I would recommend for a carry-on bag. Now level two, kind of the mid-tier is something I think you'll find really interesting, and that's from the folks at July. So this is my July carry-on. I also had the Czech version of this, and this is probably one of the more internet famous suitcases I feel like that's out there. Uh, there's a few of them you tend to see all over the social networks and stuff. Man, this is a pretty cool uh, carry-on bag. Uh, made of that really high quality polycarbonate, again, but I feel like a thicker, more resilient shell uh, that's seen on some other options. These have bumpers along the edges, which you can see, they kind of match the tone of the color I chose here. One thing I do especially like about the July bags too, is when you get something like this, you kind of want something that has a little bit of personality or matches your favorite color. And July has more options than just about anybody I've seen out there. They can also, I think they call it embroider, but I think they can also put initials and stuff on. But um, so really, yeah, high quality materials on the outside, has those 360 degree roller wheels, and out of all the wheels I tested in all the bags too, on both this um, carry-on bag and their check version, I feel like these are the smoothest and probably the quietest. Um, two big claim to fames here on the outside. Uh, first off, we do have really nice zippers with the TSA lock built in, kind of a standard feature along this, this nicer tier bag in general. Uh, but this zipper is a little bit more weather resistant too, uh, just kind of has the way it covers up the actual zipper tracks nice. Handles feel great. So the rolling handle, which is something you use all the time in airports and everything, I think July may actually have the market cornered on this. It's extremely smooth. So not only do you get like your normal kind of raised pattern stuff here, but once it's out, you can stop this at any level as you go up. So whatever's like the perfect height for you, you don't just have like the four levels of height you can roll it out. You can go way up or just any level down. Really, really cool. And you can also see with this handle extended, but they also have a charger built in. And when you open this up, not only can you sit down and charge your phone and everything, but if you need to, you can push down on this and you can take this whole power bank out. I think this is 10,000 milliamp hours, which is pretty good. Uh, but you can recharge that pretty easily, slide it in and out of there if you're concerned about weight. Uh, but probably the best implementation of that sort of feature that I've seen. Now, as far as the interior of this bag goes, that's where the attention to detail and materials and just thoughtful features and stuff really shines through. Really high quality fabrics, really nice zippers and everything to actually cinch things up and especially nice compression systems with a whole little removable um, kind of a panel that you can put in and out to keep things down and then strap things down even more. Also even includes a compartment for a built-in laundry bag. So as far as like one-stop shop for pretty much everything you could want for in a carry-on, I think these are really, really interesting to look at and at a really fair price for what it is. So well worth checking out. And if you're gonna order one of these, try to order them in a package. They have deals if you get the carry-on and the check-on bag together. But they also have really nice packing cube sets that are surprisingly um, affordable. <laughs> so you can get like eight of these st mesh style cubes, which are, 
fairly common design you see out there, but you can get a big eight pack that all compresses together and matches your luggage, really good deal. So if you're gonna check out, check those out too. So we got one final bag to look at. So if you're looking for more premium style carry-on, you may wanna check out this option from Level 8 again. Um, and this is definitely a premium approach to the category. It's kind of a trunk style, all aluminum carry-on. I believe this is called the Gibraltar. Uh, I'll put the name down the title if I got that wrong, but lots of premium features built into this thing. And I think it just looks really cool. It almost has like, the apple style look to like the aluminum. You got bumpers on the edges and rivets all over the place. This really cool uh, trunk style opening system, which I think is very, very neat. Um, in practice, it can be funky sometimes, but I really probably prefer that just because of how it looks. And it's got a very tight seal the whole way around. You can kind of see like a rubber ring going into it. Uh, but very thoughtfully designed, has the super nice uh, 360 wheels in the bottom that, again, feel really premium. You've got your telescoping handle here with just four stops, and it is more of a traditional handle. Not like the other Level 8 bag that had the one that went all to the edges. Um, all the handles in this are like this soft close thing, which you can kind of see it'll slowly go down. But again, it's just a premium touch. Do you need that? No. Is it cool? Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, but just feels a lot more premium. It is just a little bit heavier than the other bags. The other options I showed, both are around seven pounds. Uh, this, even before we put anything in it, is close to 10. Um, but still, you can tell it's just rock solid and really, really steady. Uh, with this aluminum on the outside, uh, again, it looks totally awesome, but I don't know how well over time it's gonna absorb shock. This is mostly like my wife's bag right now. Sometimes my daughter uses this thing just because they like the look of it. Um, that's something to think about. It may have some character over time and everything. Uh, when you open things up, it does have a really cool organization on the inside, two big mesh flaps that you can strap down at the edges. And it actually includes its own packing cube system with kind of a large packing cube insert with little mini cubes where you can customize the logos depending on what you're carrying. Uh, which is a really nice touch, really kind of a premium touch. Probably the only drawback I've seen when I've used this is those tabs in the side where you strap stuff down. Uh, if you're not using that uh, compression system, it kind of, the tabs still kind of stick out into the stuff you're packing into it, which can catch on stuff sometimes. But if you're looking for a premium bag, this is actually, even though it is pricey, it's less pricey than many of the other options out there. So I check this thing out, maybe a huge upgrade you're looking for at the airport. So there you go. That's all the gear and gadgets I've been checking out over the last few months. Now, I hope you found something you'd like in this video, some upgrade that It'll make things even better for you. If you want to pick one of these items up, go down in the description. I've got links all over the place to the cheapest prices I could find online. I hope that helps you out. Hey, if you dug this video, be sure to hit the like button because it helps the channel out a ton. And subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this down the line. We'll see you next time.